for most men, there's something special about time spent with just other men. Our relationships with our close male friends are critical to feeling accepted among the community of men and for avoiding isolation. Can you talk about some of the positive, uplifting experiences you had as an adult in your friendships with other men? Mm, oh, of course, yeah. I've got a tremendous group of men friends around town. And, uh, you know, one thing about those men, you know, once we get past the surfacey talk uh, of talking about girls or cars or money or a job, you know, start talking about real things, get below the surface. Now we really start to get to know each other. And it's amazing how many people really don't know each other that well, other than those surfacey kind of conversations. I like to go deep in my conversations. I like to talk about your family and your upbringing and your dreams and all those kind of great things that uh, really make a person whole. A couple of my my greatest mentors and friends have been some of my old basketball coaches. Uh, these are guys now in their mid eighties, uh, you know, grandfatherly types, that, but I knew them 40 years ago when I was coming through university and just starting my professional basketball career. Uh, guys like Lenny Wilkins, who used to coach the Seattle Supersonics. I, I have breakfast with Lenny every month and we just talk and talk and talk. And George Ravling, my old, uh, WSU basketball coach, a great, great dear friend. Now these guys were coaches and mentors for years, but as we got older, they became friends. I still call them both coach, but you know, that's out of respect. And that's because they continue teaching me things about life. I remember George Rabling telling me during the midst of my depression, you know, and uh, I was really struggling and I, had, I was 60 years old. I was, yeah, just turned 60. And George Raveling told me, he's like, James, you know, I coached for four decades and I never reached the pinnacle of the heights of my profession. And my real breakthrough didn't come through until I was 63 years old when I went to work for Nike Global International. And that's where he still is 20 years later working with Nike. Um, and he told me, hey, you just have to hang in there. You cannot give up. Matter of fact, I'm not going to let you give up. And, you know, he, it sounded like back in 1975, you know, when I was with WSU, uh, here he is coaching me still, I'm not going to let you give up. And uh, he kept checking in on me. He kept, he kept his word to keep me on track. And he was always there for me throughout. So that's what a really good friend does for you. And us men, we need to get beyond the surface you talk and sit down and just talk with each other deep below the surface build that bond, that relationship, and it will never go away. It'll always be there with you. And it's something that you will definitely need uh, as you go on through this journey of life. It helps when men talk to men. Uh, I've got a lot of great mentors in my life that I can feel very comfortable reaching out and talking to. Guys who are older than I am, uh, guys who are my same age. Um, and it just gives you a sense of, wow, there's an innate understanding uh, you know, women are great and they do a lot of great things for everything and everybody, but there's a lot of things that they just cannot quite relate to when, uh, when men are talking to men about men's things. We know exactly and intuitively what we're talking about. And that's, what, that's a great help for men. The thing I found, I think men need a safe place to feel vulnerable. They need a place where they won't feel judged. Uh, they won't feel ridiculed or ashamed. And um, they have to be able to carve out that place amongst a, a, a small handful of intimate friends who know them very well. And these are the friends you have to keep close to you because when you do go through your difficult times, they remember you when you were flying high and everything was going great. Now they see you down at the depths of things. The same way with my intimate group of friends I had around me coming through. Uh, and they, they knew that when I reached out to them, and when I told them what I was going through and that I needed them, uh, you know, to call and check on me time to time because no one else was calling at the time. My life was totally bleak and dark and, and lonely. And I needed them to call me and check on me. And I wanted to see if I could call them at one or two in the morning. So that's the safe place that I carved out for myself. I never felt judged. I never felt ridiculed or ashamed because these were dear friends for 30 or 40 years, each of them. My, now my dad's still around, he's 94 years old now. 
uh, you know, but he's getting a little uh, mentally in incapacitated a little bit, declining slightly, so he can't have the long conversations we used to have. But my dad was there with me throughout all my growing up years. Uh, I, I was raised in a two, two parent household, my mother, my father, education was really stressed. So I had a good foundation to start my childhood and my young adulthood off with, which unfortunately so many young kids don't have. And that's really, uh, that's really too bad, but it's, it's not the end of the world. You know, it's something that you can find substitute pieces to replace and to support all that and you'll be just fine. Yeah, initially we had a tremendous amount of very positive publicity. Since then, I think they're waiting to see who's gonna rise up, especially in the money raising compartment, uh, which is where we're lacking a little bit. We need to get money into our coffers to make it look like we're a real serious, legitimate campaign. We're going for the democracy vouchers right now, uh, which would be another 400,000 into our campaign once we qualify for that. So. That's kind of our strategy. We feel like by mid-June, we should have that money in our accounts and then, then we're off and running and on the debate stage with all the other candidates.